How's the ice block, Leo? Loving it. We are back for another episode. And this episode's a little bit different than normal. There's no lifestyle vlog or adventuring or hiking or fishing or none of that. Because if you guys have seen what the weather's been like. Yeah, Leo, look at the mangoes. He's, he's found them. <laughs> if you guys didn't know what the weather's been like in Southeast Queensland the last week, it has been shocking. The rain has just been non-stop. And between that and trying to organize this massive change that's coming for us very soon, we haven't done any hiking, fishing or adventuring. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to run you guys through our car and caravan setup and how we managed to buy a brand new car and a brand new caravan and fit it all out for $100,000. I'm gonna walk and talk with Tony. Ooh. Ow. Maybe not. I wanted to keep this one super quick for you guys. We've already done a car tour video and a caravan tour video, but combined there's like over an hour's worth of video there to watch. So this one's gonna be nice and sweet. Just for the cost, it's kind of straight to it. Yeah, the first thing we're gonna run through is the car. This is a 2017 Mitsubishi Triton. I bought this car as a work rig back in 2017. It's obviously a full drive and I paid $30,000 flat for this thing, which is a pretty good bargain. Accessories for the car. So first thing is the bull bar. This is an Iron Man bull bar. I paid $1,200 for this thing and I fitted it myself. We've got the lighting here. So all the lighting is from the four wheel drive super center, the King's brand, with laser spot lights and one of their slimline LED bars. This was a freebie, the lights were 500. Inside here we have the Dominator winch, which is the $500 one. I suppose it's just the updated one that they've brought out. So it's 500 bucks in that. Under here, we've got the best stuff that Outback Armor do is what we bought and put in this car. So it's a coilover front with adjustable dampening and it's also adjustable in height. And the rear, which is 400 kilo constant load leaf springs. And I've also got the Airbag Man airbags fitted in there as well so in total that cost four thousand dollars and i had that professionally fitted so these big old mirrors are towing mirrors they cost us 440 dollars from outback equipment they're like a clear view knockoff but they're like half the price and they do the job great and we also have our uhf this is the aerial for it i'm also wearing a different shirt because i'm a magician no i'm kidding you'll see why further in the video I actually forgot this and I've come back to shoot this again. So the UHF I have in this car came out of my last car and it was in my last car when I bought it. So I don't know exactly how much this one cost. But then I'm going to say 250 bucks should cover you. Get yourself a UHF kit and I installed it myself. So obviously the Triton didn't come with this canopy on there. I kind of built this one myself. It's pretty DIY. So the entire canopy build empty cost me about $2,200. And that's including everything you see here, toolboxes, mud guards, the tray, the framework for the canopy, the aluminium sheeting and the vinyl as well. You can't forget the tinny because it sticks out like dog's balls. There's this big silver thing on my roof. The whole tinny setup, including the motor and the tinny slide that I've got that I'll show you guys when I go inside the canopy, cost me... Can we check? Yeah, bring the, get the phone yeah, out. The whole thing cost me $2,400. That's a tinny, the motor, and the tinny motor slide as well. So we may as well go into the canopy now and run you guys through the stuff that's inside there and how much it costs. This so is the tinny and tinny motor slide. I may as well give you guys a little bit of a show on how that works. And she pops down. Sweet. So the tinny motor we got is a 9.9 .9 Mercury two-stroke motor. This is a 2019 model. She goes good. So I didn't go out and buy all this stuff to start with. Obviously we left on our travels and we've uh, gotten rid of a lot and bought a few things along the way. And this is one of those things that we kind of bought along the way. And now the um, other business side of our canopy, that's got even more magical wonders. We've got our fridge, we've got our battery system, we've got this little wiring box that has charging stuff like SIG sockets, USB port, voltmeter. I should mention I've done it all myself, so I've wired it all up myself. I haven't had to pay for any installation, but the entire amount I paid for the whole setup is, bear with me, I have it written down, $1,300. Stinky's a bit bored, so he's gonna hang out with us for the rest of this video. Say hello, Leo. I don't even know, man. Anyway, there's that set up. 
Uh, the draw here, we've got one of the Titan draw systems again from the four wheel drive super, super center. That flies in and out. And I have two of these, they were $130 each, so that is $260 for the draws. So toilet training is going swimmingly. Leo pissed on me and I now have a new shirt on. Ready to go. Back to the car. So we have recovery gear stored in the drawers. Um, recovery gear is super important, so I want to definitely mention buy that. Our entire recovery kit cost us 80 bucks. And again, four drive super center purchase. It has a snatch strap, a winch extension strap, um, shackles. It has all the stuff you need for winch recovery and obviously other vehicle snatching recovery as well. Can you see some of those? And we've used all of our recovery gear and it's all worked totally fine, including our winch. I know a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about Kings, but I've been pretty happy with our stuff from there so far. And another one right here is our Weber. It's a I mean, are you traveling Australia who don't have a Weber? So Shani just cut me off. I was gonna mention what sort of Weber it is. It's the Baby Q one, it's the smallest one they do. It fits nicely in the back of the ute and on a little camp table. Thanks Shani. This one cost us 280 bucks. In here, we've got our air compressor. It is a Thumper Max air compressor. Another full drive super center purchase. Uh, I have that hardwired into the starter battery, so it <laughs> is nice and easy to use. So that cost me 150. The wiring and the connections and stuff would have cost me about 50 bucks. So we'll say 200 bucks for the air compressor hardwired in. You don't have to mind how dirty the car is too. Ooh. We haven't washed it in a long time. What? Am I going all like? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting Elvis Presley. Oh man. All right, in this toolbox here, we have our water and water pump. I've just got it connected to one of these little hoses and it was a little cheapy sea flow pump under there. And the water tank for that is also located under here as well. This is a 60 liter Kamek tank. And the entire cost for the tank, the pump, the hose, and the wiring to do this whole water tank setup was about 150 bucks. Mm. What are you doing in there, man? <laughs> Shani literally wants me to mention what every little thing is good for. If you don't know what having running water in a car is good for, you're not ready to buy a caravan and four-wheel drive into Australia. In terms of actual modifications I've done to this car, there isn't a great deal for like performance and stuff like that. I guess I put a, I did put a catch can on there to prevent oil building up in the intake and causing that issue that's well known amongst a lot of the four cylinder full drives. And I think most cars get the carbon build up. So we prevented that with an oil catch can. That cost me 300 bucks. And we have a heavy duty clutch installed as well. Now, I'm not going to add that to the cost of things because we ran our stock clutch until it was dead and then replaced with a heavy duty clutch and it was cheaper to go a heavy duty clutch than replace with the standard clutch. I could go into detail about it, but I'm not going to. So we're not including the cost of the heavy duty one. And when you are traveling Australia, <laughs> a bit close. <laughs> when you are traveling Australia full time, it pays to get yourself a tool kit. I'll show you the one we've got. This again. Avenger Kings toolkit. This one was 80 bucks, man. And it has socket set, spanners, Allen keys, pliers, snips. It has so much stuff in it. And you might say they're crap tools, but I've been using this kit for this car, or this car and the car previous to that for a lot of the mechanical work I was doing just because I had it there handy. And nothing's broken, like it's all doing its job. So, how to win? 80 bucks. So things we use to tow the caravan. There's a tow bar back here. And we have a weight distribution hitch in our tow bar. This is what these bars are. So weight distribution hitch. Yes, Leo. Here, ready? 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 He's not ready. <laughs> the weight distribution hitch. So what it does is it distributes the ball weight of the caravan. So the ball weight is the weight that's put on this tow ball. Obviously puts a lot of weight over your, your rear axle and pulls weight from your front axle to the rear axle by making your car sit up like that. I'd love to use animations for that, but I don't know how to do that in editing yet. So this is the best you guys are going to get. It's gang signs. <laughs> gang signs, basically. <laughs> um, and it just puts a bit of that weight back over the front wheels and just makes the weight distribution better. This one costs us 420 bucks. And then to tow a caravan or anything heavy, you need to have a brake controller. 
Lean like a jungle. It's a new dance move. <laughs> All right, and then last thing we have is a Red Arc Topro Elite brake controller to tow anything heavy. I don't know the exact specs. You need to have a brake controller that does that. And the Red Arc Topro Elite is, I think, the best one because it works gyroscopically. And that one cost us, cost not six. 600 I think yeah I paid $600 to have that one in supplied and installed by my friendly local mobile mechanic are you still filming yeah all right sweet so if any of the stuff that we had was like crap or was no good I wouldn't be sharing it with you guys it would have we would have gotten rid of it by now and bought new stuff but this is the stuff we still have after a year of traveling on the road so that's why I'm showing it to you it's because we've used it and it works so this purpose to us all right guys so this is our caravan this is a big white and orange one that we bought. <laughs> <laughs> we actually wanted to change the color. We just bought it because it was super cheap and I basically bring you to the cost. We paid $43,500 for this caravan, brand new. Bought it at an expo, it ticked all the boxes that had what we needed. I guess I'll show you guys exactly what we paid $43,500 for. So this is the caravan. It is, give you a little bit of info about it. It's a semi-off-road caravan, so it's warranted on any gazetted road in Australia. We've towed it up and down beaches over some pretty lumpy stuff and been totally fine. The clearance on it is not the best. Bigger wheels would be great to obviously bring up the clearance of the caravan, but it is what it is. Just want to mention as well, before we actually bought this caravan, we only ever saw, was it two other caravans? Yeah. Yeah, saw two other caravans. So. I was actually blown away when I first walked into a caravan. I was like, whoa, they're really a little motel hotel on wheels. It's crazy. And yeah, like Antonio said, this one just ticked all the boxes. Obviously living in it for a year, there's some things we will change, but we'll show you what we actually got for that price, which I think is amazing. Quick caravan tour. Bunk beds, bottom bunk, top bunk, two kids live there, sleep there. Toilet shower combi. There's shower and our toilet as well in here. Fridge, 186 litre adsorption fridge, three-way fridge, runs on gas, AC and DC. Kitchen area. We have three gas burners and an uh, induction burner, I think you call it, just a little hot plate that runs on electricity. Ample storage everywhere. There's cupboards like all over the place up there. there. Anywhere there was any spare room, there's storage. Like there's storage under these seats, which is our lounge room. There's a half-eaten pair on the table. Don't mind that. You get that when you get yourself a Leo. But yeah, storage under this lounge, both these lounge chairs. Storage under Leo's bed, which is the bottom bunk we just seen. There is our bed. This is the main bedroom down this end. Guys, come with me. This is the open home. I'm a real estate agent. Yeah, so it's a queen size bed between me and Shani sleep. All our clothes storage up there and massive storage space underneath this bed as well. It has an air con like most new caravans do. This also has turned into a bed. My mum and Antonio's mum has slept on it. So there you go. It can sleep five people. There you go. Well, if you, you can, I reckon you can sleep four more, well, four people in that bed. We just haven't done that. <laughs> not into that sort of stuff. So we haven't changed a lot with our caravan since buying it. Like we said, it ticked a lot of the boxes when we bought it new. The biggest upgrade we did is the battery and power system for this thing. So we want, we want it to be off-grid more and more comfortably. And we've upgraded our battery system. We went lithium with all in a drive charging and that to suit and had it wired in by the guys at Accelerate Auto Electrics. The cost of that would be about $12,000 if you're gonna do it to your own caravan. And then we also suck these little fans in. Give you guys a quick look. You installed them. I installed these fans. These are the... Uh, Sirocco 2. I put them upside down, actually. Sirocco? Yeah, Sirocco 2 fans. They're about 150 bucks each. We bought three. So quick math, that's 450. So things we bought to kind of make the van livable itself, like appliances, knives and forks, a whole cutlery. So just the stuff you need in the house more or less we took from our house and put it into the caravan we didn't buy a lot but granted if you you might want to buy stuff and i'm going to allow 200 bucks to go to kmart and buy yourself all the stuff you need to stick in your caravan to make it livable yeah my favorite things are probably the oh, knife yeah. magnet little magnet. knife magnet yeah the spice rack 
That's about it. I did forget something. <laughs> GVM and ATM upgrades. The ATM in this caravan has been upgraded by 400 kilos and that would cost you around $400 to do depending on your caravan. And then the GVM upgrade. So the suspension I've fitted to the car allows for the GVM of the vehicle to be upgraded by 10% and that's something you need to go through Outback Armor or your suspension supplier to do. And that would cost us around $800 to do. I say that because we haven't done it just yet, but it is on the list of things that need doing. So the price is that 800 bucks. Actually, I should probably do a little bit of a review on the car itself, because that's a big question everyone asks me, is how does the Triton tow the caravan? Danny's um, shoulders and neck and arms <laughs> got sore from holding the big camera, so. The Triton tows the caravan pretty well for what it is. The fuel efficiency is great. We get on average about 15 litres per 100, towing the caravan and the tinny on the roof and the whole lot. Cons about it, I guess, would be the fact that it is a four cylinder, so it's a very small motor, it's a 2.4 litre. When you're driving into a headwind, it's hard to do 100 k's an hour sometimes if it's blowing its tits off. So you do 90 k's an hour, it's kind of how you fix that issue. Same as hills and stuff on the highway, we'll chuck it back in the fourth gear, do 80 k's an hour up some of the hills. It doesn't tow like a V8 because it's not one. Question, if you actually had to buy a car to travel Australia, would, what would you choose? Like, would you go with the Triton again? I'd probably, or? honestly, I'd probably buy another Triton. Hey, yeah. if I was gonna travel full time again and tow and do what I'm doing now, I'd buy another Triton. Like, just bang for buck, they're good. It's been great off-road. It's been reliable, hasn't broken down at all. I've put 120,000 Ks on that car since new and it hasn't let me down once, so. Yeah. I guess that's saying something. We do look after it, though. And then, mm. cons of the caravan. So we love the caravan, it's become our home, it's comfortable as. Things we would change about it, we would definitely change from a combi toilet shower to an ensuite oh, yeah. toilet and shower. So having a toilet and shower separate to one another. But I suppose the reason behind that is because when someone showered and you want to go to the toilet, you've got to stand on a wet floor to go to the toilet. And mm. having a space to step out of the shower that isn't the living space would be fantastic. We've kind of gotten used to that now, but yeah, getting out of the shower in the nude and everyone's just kind of, you just you basically, you, you, you step out of your bathroom into the lounge room. Is kind of how it works in this caravan. Our actual washing machine inside the caravan would be awesome too. And these things are so stupid. I'll show you. Oh man. These, this is like the little barrier that you like close up and it closes in the bunk beds. I'll give you some more angle. There we go. And after a little while, they just don't fold back the way they're supposed to. The kids kind of have at them and play with them a little bit and they just, God, they're annoying. It takes five minutes to put it away, which doesn't sound like much, but man, when you do it every day, it's pain in my backside. And we've always wanted to keep things pretty simple, practical, easy. We're not about having big flashy things. So overall, I am very happy with our setup. I wouldn't really change too much besides those little things like you said. And I'm really happy with the price we've paid for everything. You should see our email box. We sign up to so many places to get 10% off your first purchase and things like that. So we're always like scouting out deals. Um, that's how we pretty much save money when buying things. It's pretty well, that's it. So there's our cost. There's a car cost over here, a caravan cost over here. I hope I can frame that right with the numbers I'm gonna put over this. And that comes to about $100,000. I want to say about because I don't know what the actual number is. I'm going to add that up when I edit this video, but it'll be around 100k. Cool, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. She wanted to be included in that. She waved me down and called me over. And then, yeah, please subscribe, guys, if you like our stuff. We'll be back to adventuring as soon as we've got this big news kind of done and out of the way. I really, really want to tell you guys what it is, but I can't at the moment. Once I can, I'm excited, man. I will. You'll be know. the first to know. But yeah, guys, take it easy. We'll see you guys when we're looking at you. Next Monday, because we upload videos every Monday. But we also upload videos on Wednesday sometimes too. The caravan. Oh. Mm -hmm. Even more evenly over to the... <laughs> what it does <laughs> is... <laughs> oh, man. Someone's turned it up. Danny. Get out of my path, son of a bitch. <laughs>